couple weeks ago, I showed how to use the uh, new interpolation frame interpolation uh, tool in Hugging Space, um, or Hugging Hugging Face Spaces. So it's sort of hard to pronounce that. Um, and I said I would do a collab version, and then I disappeared for three weeks. Um, so I'm back to show you how to do the collab version. Uh, one of the things is actually some stuff's been updated, um, and we'll talk through that. Uh, there's some new updates to this repo that I think are really cool that you might want to take a look at. Um, so I'm just going to show a really basic example of how to do frame interpolation uh, within um, Colab, uh, and we can take a look and sort of talk about some of the settings. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, just open this up. I should mention um, I got this notebook off of Twitter uh, from this user. I believe this is Two Motion. Um, is how you pronounce this, but um, just want to say thank just thanks to them. I made a bunch of updates, so this supports Google Drive, and also it uses the latest um, frame interpolation GitHub repo from Google. Uh, so I'm using a V100 here, so it should be pretty fast. I'm actually going to skip G Drive. Uh, for you, if you're using, if you have a really long video that you want to save, uh, I recommend definitely saving it directly to, to Drive. For this example, I'm just going to do something that's pretty short, maybe four seconds, and I'm going to run it directly through Colab. So I'm actually going to skip all the Drive stuff. It should work fine if you run Drive and run all the rest cells. It should work more or less the same. Um, if it doesn't, let me know, and I will try to make sure it's uh, fixed. So I'm going to skip that cell, and I'm going to run this one. This just updates uh, a couple things in my repository. Um, one thing to note is that uh, you will need to restart the runtime. Um, so it says here that you'll see a message that says restart runtime. And once you do that, you'll want to run this cell again. So this is going to take maybe a minute or two to do that. So while that happens, um, I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to upload a video. So let me just show you the video I'm going to use. Um, so video, I'm going to use this little four second Kung Fu clip. So we're going to slow this down. I don't know couple X. Um, so we'll do that. So upload that into Colab. And now this is finished. Um, and you'll see here at the bottom, it says you must run start restart the runtime in order to use newly installed versions. So we're going to go ahead and hit run restart. Yes. Um, this is important to know that this restart is not a factory reset restart. So you don't lose your files. So I just uh, reset the notebook, and I'm just going to run this again just to make sure that everything is installed correctly, as it should be. There we go. Uh, so next thing is we need to actually install the repository. Um, again, if you're using the drive version, you'll find that I've set this up so that you can save the entire repo directly to drive. Um, makes it a little bit faster the next time we run or run this. Pretty quick. And the next is we need to download the pre-trained models. Um, I always recommend that you know if you're gonna if you know you're gonna use this quite frequently to save your pre-trained model into Drive into the same folder that you have other things in. Um, again, it's just gonna save you maybe a minute or two of time. Um, the important thing for that is also that sometimes pre-trained models disappear after a while, um, so you might lose them. So make sure you probably do want to save this somewhere. So again, if you're not following along in this demo and you realize you want to use this more, use Drive and save save your model there. Just know that the models, I believe, are about a gigabyte of files, so just make sure you have enough space for that. So go ahead and run the cell. So yeah, 919 megabytes. All right, and now we're pretty much ready to go here. So two things to know is, you know, this particular model doesn't actually look at a video. It looks at frames of videos. So you're interpolating between individual frames. So the key thing to know is the first thing you want to do is actually split your video into frames. So we're going to do that by copying the path uh, to your video here and paste it between the qu double quotes. Um, I always recommend that you don't have spaces in your video file names just for your own sanity. Um, but especially if you do have a space in your name, uh, you want to make sure that you wrap it in double quotes or single quotes just to make sure that uh, it actually gets the full path. So we're on this. This will just turn every frame or every like frame in my video into a single image, a PNG. Because I only have a four second video, this should be pretty quick. Um, refresh my folder over here. You'll see in over here I have input frames. And in here I've got, I don't know, something like 115 frames. All right, so now we are actually ready to go ahead and run the frame interpolation. So if you're interested in all the features that you can run, um, you can run this cell, which is dash help. And this will show you sort of how it works. Um, and it will show you some of the uh, outputs here. So FPS, uh, align. Okay, interesting. I didn't even know align existed. All right, well, that's cool. Um, FPS is the frames per second rate for your video. Um, 
path to your file to your model file i've already got that set up um, so you don't need to worry about that and then uh, we're output to video um, and we can sort of skip this stuff times to interpolate is the, the most important thing that we want to know um, so we'll talk about that next so go ahead and close this um, so this little repository or this little like cell here is all we need to worry about to actually run this so the first thing is your input folder on the off chance you changed your name or you have your your images in a different folder make sure you uh, paste in the path to this one other really important note is uh, sometimes I accidentally even a uh, last slash um, and that will throw an error message so if you see an error message just double check to make sure your folder does not have a slash after it um, so if you used my version uh, this should be totally fine because this will work just as is so you go ahead and leave this as is um, and then we got to talk about times so times uh, you would think would mean 1x, 2x video time, but what it actually is is it's power to, to the second. So uh, 2 to the first power is 2x, um, 2, to the four, to, 2 to the second power is 4x, uh, and 2 to the third power is 8x, 16x, etc. So um, just know that the longer you crank this up, it's not going to just be linear, it's actually exponential, um, which can be quite a lot. So you really don't, I actually wouldn't recommend doing much more than 3 or 4 unless you want to see what it looks like. Um, We'll talk about also other techniques in just a minute. So I'm gonna leave this at, let's just leave it at 1x or 2x, um, just to sort of match what we need, um, just so we just slow down a little bit. Um, I did already pre-render a video at 4x, so you can, we can look and see how that works. Um, and then FPS, you should probably set this to whatever frames per second rate your video is, um, just to have it match. Obviously, if you slow it down, it'll be a little bit different, um, is what it is. So at this point, we're pretty much ready to go ahead and run this. Uh, so you should note that in here I've already hard-coded in values for where the uh, path to your uh, model file is. Um, so if you move stuff around, make sure you update the path. Go ahead and run this. And you will get a bunch of sort of code spit out here. Um, a lot of this, unless it says error or something, you don't really need to worry about. So this is now run. Um, I do want to point you to... Uh, while this runs, I'll sort of talk about some other things. So I'm going to point you to um, the GitHub file or the GitHub repo. And there are a couple of things that they've added recently to the, the GitHub thing that I think is worth pointing out. Um, one of the updates they made recently is, if I can find it, maybe it's somewhere up here. So if you have a high resolution video, this generally doesn't work for super high res video. Um, that's just because it's taking in every frame and trying to read those images and uh, it just kind of struggles with really high res images. So there is a way to set uh, both block height or block width um, and this would then allow you to uh, extract patches. So basically it would sort of like take little blocks from your high res video and do the interpolation across those blocks and then stitch it back together. My guess is you would get slightly less good results with that but it is possible to use it. Um, I've seen people asking about sort of, I want to do this on 4K video and whatever. And that's definitely going to be a, a bit of a challenge, but you can play with this and sort of it should work. All right. So um, it looks like my video has finished training here, or sorry, finished outputting. Um, and you'll see that we have a line here generating in between frames, output frames, and then output video. So inside of my input frames folder here, if I open that up, I'll now see I have in interpolated frames. So this will be the, the PNGs, or are they JPEGs? PNGs of every interpolated frame. So if you want just like the raw source, you can get that. Um, I guess if you want to bring in After Effects, you want to control like what the, what codec you're using to output it from, you can use that. Um, for me, mostly what I care about is the interpolated.mp4. That's just the finalized uh, exported video from it. So we'll go ahead and download that. So you'll see my video went from four x or sorry four seconds to ten seconds. Um, I'd have to double check the exact frame rate on that. It might be that I slowed the frames per second down a little bit. So, but I believe it's it's about two x for it to count the frames. So go ahead and play it. And you'll see it looks pretty good. You know, um, it's probably definitely better than what uh, like an FFmpeg or like, um, you know, yeah, I guess FFmpeg does does frame interpolation as well. It's probably better than that. Um, so not too bad. So I also uh, previously recorded a 4x version. That's this one. And if you play this, you'll see it moves really slow. 
you'll see it's not super fluid. Um, and you'll also see here that there's these pauses. So I was trying to figure out why there's pauses in this. And I think what probably happened, um, and this is a common thing if you've done anything with old video, I believe this is probably a film that was recorded at 24 frames per second. And then when it was digitized, someone turned it to like 29.97, which is a common DVD frame rate, um, which means there's actually duplicate frames every couple, like every second or two um, inside of this film. And what you're seeing here is like, as you stretch out those frames where it duplicates, you get a really long pause. So it's really kind of important to make sure that your input video is also formatted correctly. This one probably isn't. If I were to go back, I'd probably just want to like resequence it at like purely 24 frames per second or something. Um, but this is what happens when you sort of stretch, stretch out a problem with like a video with that sort of problem in it. Um, so this is 4X, uh, the other one was 1X. You can definitely see like 1X is probably better than 4X. Um, one thing I would maybe guess or maybe want to experiment with is what if I took my 1X video and I ran it through again, um, so I got 2X, then I ran it through again to get 4X versus the actual 4X like step to like, jumping directly to there. In my experience, sometimes you get better results doing little steps one at a time, um, but it's kind of, I would probably recommend testing it to see and see what happens. Um, if you wanted to do this, if you wanted to sort of do uh, another run um, on the same footage, on the slower footage, like do 1x or do 2x and 2x again, you could actually just take interpolated frames, copy the path here, and paste that whole path in, and you could run this again. And instead, it's just going to run on just the newly interpolated frames. Um, my guess is it's going to take longer to do 2x, 2x, 2x than it is to do uh, like the 4x or 16x or whatever I was doing, but you might get better results. Um, so that's something that worth worth experimenting with if you're unhappy with sort of the bigger uh, these bigger times jumps. Um, cool. So that's uh, everything I want to show you for this collab notebook. Uh, you'll see it's definitely a little bit more involved to get this set up than Hugging Face uh, Spaces, um, but you can also do it on bulk video instead of two frames at a time, um, like on Hugging Face. So uh, definitely worthwhile to play with. Um, and again, you do need a pretty beefy GPU to get this running. I mean, it took, what, uh, two minutes to do uh, a 2x, but this is on a V100. So, um, you know, on a P100, it's going to take four minutes on whatever. I don't even know what it would take to do it locally on like a non-NVIDIA GPU. Probably be slow. Uh, but anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. Um, I hope this is helpful. Apologies for the three weeks uh, waiting on this, but I did actually have to make some updates to the notebook to make this work um, and hope you enjoy this and hope you find uh, value. Um, Going to have some more uh, notebook uh, tutorials and some other things coming up in the next couple weeks. Um, so keep an eye out. Thanks.